In a blockbuster trade, the New York Jets have acquired star wide receiver Devontae Adams from the Las Vegas Raiders. It's a splashy move. It's a move that will generate plenty of headlines. But unfortunately, it's not a move that makes the Jets much more likely to be a Super Bowl team. Let's discuss why today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Tuesday, October 15th, 2024, and I'm your host, John B. from GangreenNation.com. Thank you so much for making the show your first listener or first watch every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. This is our second episode of the day, and the reason we have a second episode is the Jets have pulled off a blockbuster trade, first reported by Ian Rappaport of NFL Network. Devontae Adams is coming to New York. The Jets acquire the star-wide receiver from the Las Vegas Raiders in exchange for a third-round pick that could escalate to a second-round pick depending on how Adams plays and depending on the success the Jets have as a team. This was a move that's been speculated about for quite a long time. In fact, you can go back to last year when the first rumblings about Adams potentially coming to the Jets started to surface. The Jets turned the page after an ugly loss on Monday Night Football. And these Tuesdays have become big news days for the New York Jets. Last week on Tuesday, they fired their head coach, Robert Sala. This week on Tuesday, they trade for Devontae Adams. And I have to say, my feelings this week about the trade for Devontae Adams are not that dissimilar from what I said a week ago when the Jets fired Robert Sala. I felt last week when the Jets fired Robert Sala, it was a justified move. You could make a case it made the Jets a better football team, but it did not fix the underlying problems with the New York Jets. Devontae Adams does... Adding him make the Jets a better football team? Of course. Is is the receiver room better than it was you know, 12 hours ago before the Jets made this trade? Absolutely. Does this fix the underlying problems with this football team, though? Not even close. To me, if you're going to send out a day-two pick for a soon-to-be 32-year-old wide receiver, it needs to. there needs to be one very spe- specific piece of criteria that needs to be met. This has to be the player that takes you over the top and turns you into a Super Bowl team. If the Jets, through the first six weeks of the season, stood toe-to-toe with the great teams in this league, if the Jets looked like they were going to be a team that could that could match up with Kansas City or Baltimore, if the Jets looked like they were playing great football, and we were at a point where, you know what, they're, they're about even with the great teams in the AFC, this guy will put them over the top, I'd be all for this trade. That's not where we are right now. This is a two and four football team. You you ever hear the expression throwing good money after bad? That's what this feels like to me. The Jets, it's not just that they're two and four. They have looked really bad getting to two and four. I mean, I've heard the argument that Jets are a couple plays away from being five and one. Well, you know what? Every team in the league is a couple plays away. It has a couple games they let slip away. You know, every every bad team in the league is a couple plays away from being a good team. But if you look at the, the path the Jets have taken to get there, it's not been very impressive. You know, their, one of their two wins was against the Tennessee Titans. That was a game they could have lost. So you say the Jets are a couple plays away from being five and one. Jets are maybe one or two plays away from being one and five right now. And I think they're closer to being one and five than they are five and one right now. Does trading for Devontae Adams fix your defensive line? Because that's a pretty big problem right now, both in terms of the pass rush, but and especially the run defense. Devontae Adams doesn't fix that. Does Devontae Adams fix your offensive line? No. Hey, your offensive line's a problem too, especially the, the tackle position. Tyron Smith's not looking so good. Morgan Bozes also isn't looking so good. You banked on these two 33-year-old tackles hoping you, you can squeeze one more year out of them. Doesn't look like it's happened so far. The problem with the Jets, this has been true since Woody Johnson took over, is that they they think they're always one move away. They always think that there's this one silver bullet they can turn to that's going to fix all their problems. And I almost feel like Last week's quick fix firing Robert Sala didn't work, so now we need a new quick fix. The problem with this team is that it's just not well built. They rolled the dice. They thought that with Aaron Rodgers and with this veteran-laden team that this would be a Super Bowl contender. Guess what? It's not. It's not a legitimate Super Bowl contender with Devontae Adams. I really wish it was. I spent the offseason trying to talk myself into it. You heard me on the show You try and give you the best possible path, but it hasn't worked out. Right now, what the Jets are, Jets are a house that needs to be torn down. And they're just throwing a fresh coat of paint on it. And yeah, it's great. Look, you generate all the headlines. You know, you, the NFL Network's going to be praising them all day because you know, they added a, a top-notch receiver. 
Um, you know, ESPN is going to be praising them all day. They'll, they'll win the back pages. They'll get plenty of buzz on WFAN. But that's not how you build a winning football team. Win, building a win, winning football team is more about stake than it is about sizzle. Jets have had plenty of sizzle this offseason. Look at all the big names they've added. But it doesn't always work out. You know, some, sometimes what gets your praise on NFL Network and ESPN is the opposite of what actually wins you football games. You send out a third round pick. You can say, who cares? Most third round picks don't make it. And you know what? Losing a third round pick in a vacuum really isn't that big of a deal. But think about how many picks the Jets have sent out in recent years. You had two go out the door for Aaron Rodgers. You had another go out the door for Hassan Reddick. These are all day two picks. Day two picks are very valuable. Day two picks are the meat of where the great teams in this league are built. You miss one, you know, it's not a big deal. You send four out you're really starting to put your team behind the eight ball when we talk about building for the future. And I know you can say all in, all in, all in. The Jets are focused right now on this short-term window with Aaron Rodgers. But I think you reach a point where you have to take a step back and say, you know what? We had this plan. It isn't working. There has been a massive outflow of resources to try and maximize this short-term window around Aaron Rodgers. And what do the Jets have to show for it? Well, right now they have a two and four record to show for it. It's just not working. And at some point, I think you have to be realistic about where this thing's going. Again, Devontae Adams, will he help this team? Yes. Will he help this receiving core? Yes. Will he make the offense better? Yes. Will he make the New York Jets a Super Bowl team? Well, unless they figure out ways to plug this defense, especially on the defensive line, I don't see it. Unless they figure out ways to protect Rodgers better. I don't see it. And that's going to be really tough to do because these tackles are not doing the job and the Jets don't really have any mechanism to get a solution. Uh, you know, Tyron Smith looks old. Morgan Moses looks old. And Olu Fashanu looks too young. Uh, you know, it's, they're kind of like caught in no man's land at the tackle position. And Rodgers, you know, he's his mobility was restricted before he suffered the ankle injury. And he really can't move that well. He really couldn't move that well anyway. Now his mobility is severely restricted. Devontae Adams is not going to help with these things. Devontae Adams is not going to turn the Jets into a Super Bowl team. It's almost like the Jets are just trying to make these flashy moves to stay relevant in the headlines. It's almost like the, the Jets are more focused on being the team that gets the most buzz on ESPN than they are about building something long term, building something that works. And they're just, you know, if you if you had a stock that wasn't performing and you saw that there were underlying problems with the company and you had sunk a lot of money into it. Would you continue to throw money after it just because of just because you made such a big investment in the past or would you cut it loose? Sometimes you just have to cut it loose. This era is not working right now for the New York Jets. If anything, the New York Jets would be wise to sit back a week or two because you know, if they lose another game or two, they should be sellers at the trade deadline. They should try and recoup assets for players who aren't going to be here next year rather than continue to continue to chase the thing with Rodgers. You know, what does Devontae Adams really get you? Does he maybe push you to a seven seed? Is that really what this Rodgers thing has been about? Is that really how we would define success with Aaron Rodgers if they, they sneak into the playoffs through the back door? I don't think so. I think any honest assessment right now of the New York Jets would suggest that it's very unlikely that this Rodgers, is, this, this Rodgers deal is going to work out as successfully as they hoped it would. And you can't keep chasing it, but the Jets continue to try chasing it. Now, head on the Lockdown Jets podcast. We'll turn our attention to how this impacts the passing game. I think it's clear there's a new number one receiver on this team. And there's a veteran receiver who seems pretty pretty likely to be phased out, both because of this trade and because of some of, some of what happened in Week Six against the Buffalo Bills. We'll talk about how the how things will shake out in the passing game as we continue here on this special Tuesday edition of Locked On Jets. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the scene. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Right now, the Jets are one and a half point road favorites over the Pittsburgh Steelers this coming Sunday in Pittsburgh. And Devontae Adams has not changed the line at all. The Jets opened as one and a half point road favorites. They continue to be even after the trade. 
Well, FanDuel is the place to get in on the action because, again, you get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just go to FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. Again, FanDuel.com, F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, America's number one sportsbook. This special edition of Locked On Jets is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best play to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You pick more or less than on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action in sports on over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus, it's guaranteed. And Prize Picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off, which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app, Prize Picks today, and use code LOCKEDONNFL. It's one word with no space, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L, to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. And a big shout out to you every day. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. Today, we are here to break down a huge trade by the New York Jets as they acquire star receiver Devontae Adams from the Las Vegas Raiders for a third round pick that could potentially become a second round pick if certain conditions are met. Well, I think Aaron Rodgers is a very happy man today. We know Devontae Adams is his favorite target in the NFL and we can presume that he kind of pushed behind the scenes for the Jets to make this trade for Devontae Adams. I don't think this is just speculation. I don't think it's an accident that hours after Aaron Rodgers pub- publicly criticized a route Mike Williams ran on an interception Rodgers threw in the fourth quarter that the Jets make a trade for his favored receiver. Rodgers and Adams have great chemistry. And they th- this addition probably will help the Jets clean up some of the issues they've had in their passing game. Rodgers plays the quarterback position in a bit of a unique way. If you've ever watched him, you know, he improvises a lot more with his throws than other quarterbacks. You know, if he if he sees the coverage is le- is leaning a certain way, even if it's not in the even if it's not the route the receiver's running, he'll throw it to the receiver. He'll try and throw the receiver open. So if the receiver is supposed to break right and he sees an opening left, he'll throw the ball left and expect his receiver to adjust the route. If, you know, the receiver's running a vertical route and the receiver and there's a guy deep playing over the top, but throwing it short's open, Rodgers will throw it short, expect his receiver to adjust his routes. That's been an issue with the Jets passing game in the early part of the season. It's been an issue particularly with Williams. So I think that you'll see Devontae Adams take over a lot of Mike Williams's targets. And Williams has kind of been an afterthought in the offense anyway. I bet Mike Williams goes to the bench. In fact, there's even speculation, will Mike Williams be traded? There's no question now Devontae Adams is going to be the number one target for the Jets. Is that a good thing? Well, it could be a good thing if he's still you know, a top-of-the-league type receiver. It could have a few drawbacks, though. I mean, it felt to me like Garrett Wilson and Rodgers were finally starting to click the last six quarters of football. It got off to a really slow start. It, it was the first four and a half games or so. The two of them just did not seem on the page. They did not seem in sync. They seemed, there seemed to be frustration between the two of them. Then the second half of that Minnesota game, it felt like chemistry started to blossom and it really started to turn into a beautiful thing against the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football. Now, of course, the Jets are going to run more than two receiver, more than one receiver on any given play. So Wilson will still get his opportunities. But in some senses, you know, this this trade will help the Jets passing game because Rodgers and Adams have such great chemistry. In other senses, you know, I don't know that I love the idea that Garrett Wilson is being taken out of the primary role. Now, will this help? Will this free the Jets up to use Garrett Wilson in the slot a little bit more? Potentially. And Garrett Wilson is a guy who's very well suited to, to do good things in the slot. But I, I don't know that this is necessarily all great from that standpoint. I'll tell you one thing that's not great. I think we're at the point where we almost have to write off this Mike Williams signing as a bust for the Jets. And it, there are lots of different elements to this. You know, Williams is coming off a serious injury for this team. He, the Jets kept him on a pitch count in the early part, in the early stages of the season. So he and Rodgers didn't really get to work together. Of course, Rodgers didn't play at all in preseason this year, which you know may be the source of some of the chemistry issues he's had with the receivers because they did not get any live game action together before the start of the season. Williams, you were hoping was going to be the deep threat. You were hoping he was going to be a great back shoulder kind of guy. And you at least saw a little, you saw a little, a few sparks of that. Rodgers hit him on that huge pass in Tennessee in the fourth quarter on second and 16 on the game winning drive against the Titans. The game against Denver, it felt like maybe the two of them were starting to click. Maybe the two of them were starting to get on the same page. 
but it just has kind of disappeared the last couple of weeks. Rodgers was targeting Williams in the fourth quarter interception he threw against Minnesota, uh, where it looked like Rodgers was trying to throw back shoulder to Williams, and Williams wasn't really looking for the ball. And in any event, it felt like an off-target throw by Rodgers. Same, same was true last night, fourth quarter, game on the line. Rodgers throws an interception. He claimed that Williams ran the wrong route. Well, you know what? It didn't look like a very good throw. I, I don't know any route that requires a receipt that desi that's des designed for a receiver to run 50 yards down the field and then come back to the ball, come back to the ball. There's no 50 yard hitch in the NFL. So it just felt like the two of them never really clicked. And we know Alan Lazard's probably not going to lose his snaps. We know how frustrating of a player Lazard is, but Lazard's got chemistry with Rodgers. And it's for the reasons we just talked about. I think Rodgers really values having chemistry in receivers. He likes guys who know how to play with him. He likes guys who understand how he's going to improvise. He like he likes guys who understand he's going to throw the ball where where the opening is. He's going to throw the ball where the window is, not necessarily where the receiver's running his route. And they need to look back and they need to be aware at all times. And sometimes that pays dividends. You know, Lazard made a couple. I mean, Lazard caught the hail mary last night, but he also made he also made a really nice contested catch in traffic where you know a receiver less used to playing with Rodgers may not be looking for the ball in that spot. Um, so I think I think the guy who's the biggest loser right now is Mike Williams. And again, I think the Jets might end up trading him because he really doesn't have a spot on this football team. The Jets kind of have a log jam at the receiver position. This likely drops Mike Williams down to the number four receiver spot. And you know, typically you'd like your number four receiver to play special teams. The other thing that, that kind of stands out from last night's game was Troy Aikman, who spoke with Rodgers, talked about how Rodgers was focused on getting Xavier Gibson more involved. And of course, that didn't happen. Of course, we can debate the wisdom of whether getting Gibson involved is a good idea because Gibson hasn't really shown a lot as a receiver through his first two years. But just thinking about what Rodgers wants, just thinking about what the Jets want to do on offense, I, I, if they want to get Xavier Gibson more involved, well, that's another area where Mike Williams is going to lose. There, there are only so many targets to go around. Devontae Adams is going to take a king share of the targets. Garrett Wilson's still going to get his. Lazard's still going to get his. You're still going to have plays occasionally where you throw the ball to the tight end. Brees Hall and Braylon Allen are going to be involved. Where are the targets left for Mike Williams? It's a numbers game right now. The question becomes now, do you hold on to Mike Williams just as depth as insurance? Or do you look to trade him? Do you look to recoup some of the draft capital you lost? And now Mike Williams is not playing so well that you could expect to get a tremendous amount for him in return, but some maybe some team that's desperate for help at wide receivers willing to give you give you something for him. Of course, the Jets, I think the, the Jets still may think they're Super Bowl contenders. And if you think you're still Super Bowl contenders, maybe you hold on to Williams. Maybe, maybe you think like we need him as insurance. We need him as depth. Interesting dynamics here. But one thing I one thing I feel pretty confident in saying is that Mike Williams is going to see his role severely, su severely reduced going forward for this football team. Now, head here on the Locked On Jets podcast. I'm going to raise a question. It's going to be an uncomfortable question. Devontae Adams is at an age where a lot of receivers fall off. You know, he's known for being one of the top receivers in the NFL, but how much longer can the Jets expect that to happen? We'll discuss that continuing here on this special Tuesday edition of Locked On Jets. Today's special edition of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Game Time. Well, after the trade for Devontae Adams, I'm sure Jets tickets are going to be a much hotter commodity in the New York area, and Game Time is the best place to get last minute tickets. Game Time now has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite team play live even easier. Game Time Pick filters out the fluff to help show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I've used Game Time myself, I've used it for football, for tennis, even for a Broadway show. Only a couple hours before the event, I pulled out my phone. Couldn't believe the deals I got. My favorite part is that you get the view from your seat. They show you a picture of what your what the view will look like from where you're sitting. So no surprises, no obstructed views you weren't expecting when you arrive at your venue. Take the guess what kind of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L, LOCKEDONNFL, one word with no space for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. This is the Locked On Jets podcast. It's our second episode of the day on this Tuesday because the New York Jets have pulled off a blockbuster trade. They have acquired star receiver Devontae Adams from the Las Vegas Raiders in exchange for a third round pick. The move reunites Adams and Aaron Rodgers. The two of them were teammates with the Green Bay Packers from 2014 through 2021. Adams is Rodgers' favorite target to throw to in the NFL. And this is a move that will come with very high expectations because you're reuniting the pairing of Rodgers and Adams. But I think there is an uncomfortable question that needs to be asked right now. And it pertains to and is connected to some other recent transactions the Jets have made. Of course, last year they made the trade for Rodgers. 
at the time Rodgers was 39 years old, the expectation when the Jets got him was that he would continue to play at an MVP level. This past spring, the New York Jets signed Tyron Smith. Since Tyron Smith first set foot on an NFL field in 2011, he has been one of the top left tackles in the league. He was 33 years old when the Jets signed him. The expectation would be that he would he would continue to dominate, that he would continue to play like one of the top left tackles in the league. Unfortunately for the Jets, in neither case has the player maintained his elite level at his advanced age. Now, I know Rodgers played a very good game last night, but I think if you've watched him this year, you know this is not vintage Aaron Rodgers. This is not prime Aaron Rodgers. His mobility in particular has decreased quite a bit, and that was before he suffered the ankle injury. And more than that, at his age, he's clearly having a tough time recovering week to week. As the season gets deeper, that's only going to become more difficult. I don't think anybody can reasonably expect Aaron Rodgers to continue to play at an MVP level. I don't think anybody can reasonably expect him to get back to his peak performance at Green Bay or come close to it. Tyron Smith, he just had a brutal game against Buffalo. You know, gave up a sack, committed a huge penalty that wiped out a touchdown. A couple other very big missed blocks in that game. There was one in the fourth quarter where he missed a block on a corner that potentially could have sprung Brees Hall for a big run. You see his athleticism diminishing. He's, you see, maybe he's not as strong as he used to be. I don't think Smith's as bad as people made him out to be. I don't think he's as bad as he looked last night, but this is clearly not the same guy. And Devontae Adams is 31 years old. He's about to turn 32 in December. I think it's a fair question to wonder how long is he going to continue to be a top-of-the-league receiver? I think it's fair to ask, is he still a top of the league receiver? Because his production went down last year. He was not the same guy. And this is the type of situation that's only going to get worse as, as time progresses. Part of the problem with Adams is that he's got a re- he's got a really shaky contract. Now, after this season, next year, his cap number is over $30 million. Now, none of that's guaranteed, so the Jets could cut him. But if you cut him, then that means you've traded a third round pick for an 11 game rental. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So do you want to give this third? Do you want to pay this 32 year old guy over $30 million? I mean, I, that doesn't sound very attractive to me. Um, the other option would be, well, you could give him, give him, give him an extension to lower his short term cap hit. Then you're giving a multi-year guaranteed contract to a guy who's 32 years old. Again, that's not very attractive. Uh, if you look at the recent history of the NFL, I actually, I actually did some research on this. Receivers after 32 years old over the last 10 years, the only guy to have multiple thousand yard seasons after he turned 32 was Larry Fitzgerald. And Larry Fitzgerald was a one of a kind receiver. Devontae Adams has been a phenomenal receiver through much of his career, but I'm not going to compare him to Larry Fitzgerald. You're talking about adding a guy who is at the end of his career. And I think part of the danger with this, and again, I I know you're not going to like to hear this, but part of the danger with this is that we know Rodgers favors certain guys. Rodgers favors guys that he knows, and sometimes this is to the Jets' detriment. We just talked about Mike Williams, how Mike Williams is struggling. Well, I think part of the reason Mike Williams is struggling is that Aaron Rodgers trusts Alan Lazard more than him, and there might be good reasons for that. You know, Lazard's used to playing with Rodgers, but over the course of a long season, you'd like to see Mike Williams get more targets than Lazard. And if Devontae Adams is not still an elite receiver, this trade becomes very, very shaky. I I think to justify this trade, first of all, the Jets need to be a Super Bowl-caliber team. and Adams needs to be the type of guy that, you know, takes you from being even with Kansas City to better than Kansas City. But I think another critical component of this is that uh, Adams still has to be like a top three, a top five receiver, because how else do you justify taking targets away from Garrett Wilson? How else do you justify, you know, all these changes that are going to take place on offense to accommodate Devontae Adams? I have nothing against Devontae Adams as a player. I think that in a different scenario, if the Jets were playing up to their level, if the, if the Jets were playing up to the level of potential we all thought they had at the start of the season, this would be a different case. I even said this before the season. I, people asked me, we do a mailbag show each week on Wednesday, and so send in your questions if you, got, if you have any for tomorrow. But people asked me on a Wednesday mailbag, should the Jets try and trade Devontae Adams? And my answer was, let's see how the first six weeks go. If the Jets look like they're playing at a high level, if Rodgers looks like an MVP candidate, if Tyron Smith looks like a guy who's still who's got another year of being elite left in him, and this is a team that genuinely has a shot to make a Super Bowl push, by all means, then you go all in. If the team looks okay, then maybe you know, if the Raiders are willing to sell low on him, maybe you can get Adams for a low price, not a day two pick, then maybe. Jets start two and four. There's no way you should make a trade like this because it's just it's throwing good money after bad. It's not what you want to do. And there's added risk to this because of his age. You know, at the time the Jets traded for Rodgers, I know people are going to say Adams is going to keep being an elite receiver. I hope you're right. But at the time the Jets traded for Rodgers, people acted like there was no way he could possibly decline. 
at the time the Jets t- signed Tyron Smith, there were people who acted like there was no way he could possibly decline. Again, these moves are very popular when you talk about the, re- the reaction on the cable networks like ESPN and NFL Network. Very popular when you call into WFAN. Very popular on the back pages. This is great content. It's great. It's something to discuss. It's something for the fan base to get excited about. And this is part of the problem is that the Jets are so focused on the reactions. The Jets are so focused on being relevant. The Jets are focused on being the team that everyone's discussing that sometimes it comes at the expense of building a team that can win, building a team that's built to last, and building a team that has a good foundation. The New York Jets do not have a good foundation right now. Adding Devontae Adams does not change that. Adding Devontae Adams only adds risks because they just traded, they just took an enormously, uh, they just made an enormously risky move adding a guy who's about to turn 32 at a position that does not age all that well. There is so much, there, there's so much, there are so many pitfalls with this, with this move. I'd love to see it work out. I'd love to see Devontae Adams take the Jets to the Super Bowl. But I, if you're looking at where this team is right now, it's not close to being a Super Bowl team. Adams is older. You're you're really messing with with the hierarchy of your of an offense right now. There's just a there's just a lot here that makes me question this move. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we look back on this in February after the Jets have won the Super Bowl and laugh at how wrong I was. But I, I don't know that this was the right move for this team right now. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoyed the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on the podcast, course, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps us out. Helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Enjoy your Tuesday, everybody. And send in your mailbag questions. Tomorrow, we'll do our weekly mailbag show.